Hello and welcome to SideJoy, I'm Jacqueline and thanks so much to everyone that came from Jabril's channel. Over there we did a collab where we put a fake Destin arm on a servo and it waved back and forth. And while I was editing that video, he asked me some questions about motors. And one of them was, why does a servo motor have three wires? And I answered him in the text and I gave him kind of a higher level answer that I would give a teacher that was giving me a pop quiz because that's all I knew about servos at the time. I didn't know how they really worked until I took them apart and looked up a bunch of data sheets. Now I know how they work. These ones don't anymore. The, the wires aren't attached and they're missing some gears. But let's start with a higher level answer and then we'll do a deep dive. So we've been using DC motors and they only have two wires, but we can do a lot with just those two wires. We can use an H bridge and that will decide which side of the, gets power and which side is grounded. And that's gonna change the direction that our motor rotates. If we wanna change the speed, we're gonna use pulse width modulation. So we're gonna change the amount of time that we send the high voltage compared to the low voltage. And the longer we have it at high, the faster our motor is gonna go. So why do we need a third wire for a servo? We have a power, a ground, and a signal. This signal wire is gonna send a PWM pulse. The shortest pulse is gonna tell it to go to the zero degree position. And the longest pulse that you send it usually tells it to go to about 180 degrees, depending on what motor you have. And then pulses in between will just pick a degree anywhere between zero and 180 degrees. And this is the answer that I gave him, but it begs a lot of questions. Like, you're just telling it where you want it to go, but the power and ground are no longer telling it how fast to go or in what direction. They're just powering the servo. You're just saying, please go to this position, but how does it know where it is or how to get to that position? We need to know what direction the motor should be turning, how fast it should go, and when has it actually arrived where we want it to go? So I opened up the servos and I saw that the three wires go to an integrated chip. And this chip is attached to a bunch of resistors and capacitors. It's also attached to the DC motor and it's attached to a potentiometer. And it has three wires. One is power and ground and that is going through a voltage regulator. So it's getting the same amount of power that you're sending from your microcontroller to the chip. So it's getting 3.3 or five volts. Then that middle wire is going to the resistance value of the potentiometer. So it's attached to that armature at the top, and depending on what degrees that armature is at, you're gonna be changing the resistance value of the potentiometer. So this is telling you where you are currently, but we can't use this resistance value against a pulse to know where we wanna go and how to get there. So we're going to change this resistance value into a PWM pulse. And we're gonna do this with a one-shot generator. We're gonna talk more about one-shot generators later because Jabril's question made me do a lot of deep dives and now I know how a 555 timer works, but we'll do that next time. For right now, all you need to know is as the resistance is changing, it's gonna create a PWM pulse of varying lengths. So now we have a pulse that's saying this is where you are and this is where you wanna be. And we're gonna send them to the logic control board and the chip and that's gonna compare the two. And depending on which one's larger, it's gonna know should I be turning clockwise or counterclockwise. And it's gonna send that to something called a flip-flop and that's just gonna store the value for us for right now because we still don't know how fast we should be rotating. So it's gonna send the difference between the two pulses, the amount of difference, to a pulse stretcher. And this difference is called the error value. And the larger the error value, the faster we're gonna spin our motor. The pulse stretcher is gonna take the error between the two and stretch that out so it's long enough that our motor is actually gonna be able to turn not only itself, but all the gears that it's attached to. And the reason it's attached to a bunch of gears is because we don't want our servo motor to be spinning at really high speeds, we want it to have higher torque. So we're using those gears to increase our torque and decrease our speed. So we need to stretch out our pulse to be able to give more power to the motors. The other important thing about the pulse stretcher, it's also gonna look at the size of the error and determine if it's too small to even care about. It's called the dead band. Because when you're doing this, you're saying, okay, this is where I am, this is where I wanna be, and you might overshoot it. So now the it needs to recalculate and go back and maybe it goes forward again. And if you're off by just a little bit, it's just gonna keep going back and forth and hunting for the proper position. So the dead band area is saying, 
we're close enough, don't worry about it. Just say that the error between the two is zero, you're pretty much in the right spot, let's move on. And that's how you end this control loop that we're going through. So we have a value in our flip-flop that's telling us the direction, we're gonna send the pulse to this flip-flop, and then those are both gonna be sent to our H-bridge. And this H-bridge is going to turn the motor clockwise or counterclockwise at the speed that we've been telling it to go. And there's not a lot of current that can go through this little chip, so the manufacturer might have used two other pins on the outside and put some PNP transistors to allow higher current. I'm telling you all this because I've linked the data sheets to a bunch of servo chips down in the description below. And you can see that there are a bunch of capacitors and resistors on this board that we can use to change one, either the pulse that we're reading from the potentiometer or two, the dead band that we see with our pulse stretcher. And then those PMPs are gonna be able to increase the current. So those are the things that you're seeing on the data sheet if you ever wanted to make your own servo motor later. So where it should go? Pulse from the user. Where am I currently? Pulse from the potentiometer. In what direction should I go? A difference between the two pulses sent to a flip-flop. How fast should I go? A PWM pulse sent by a pulse stretcher goes through an H bridge and then is sent out to your motor. And then the whole thing keeps happening again and again until it gets to the right position or as close as it thinks it should go. And that's basically how a servo motor works. And Jabril asked another question. You want to know if there are motors that had more than three wires, and there are, they're called stepper motors. And we're not gonna dive into stepper motors here. I'm just gonna tell you that the different wires energize and de-energize magnets inside, and it's going to slowly move the motor forward to different positions. And this is what we use for our 3D printer and also for our CNC mill. Thanks for learning with us, and we'll see you next time.